And I do find oftentimes it's just, I take mine off because who needs to see and it's just more comfortable without it. Um, if you have glasses now, I will say it's happened to my mom. Um, as she got older, her vision, because her vision goes when you get older, actually fixed itself. So she needed glasses her entire life. And then when she was like 52, she stopped needing glasses. Her vision was perfect. The, the deformity you get when you're older actually fixed her vision. And now when she hit 60, she needs glasses again because it went too far and now it went the other way. So she's got about a good eight years of not, not needing glasses. Yeah. Okay, we are streaming now. Um, and I won't repeat everything I said because that would be it. But if you want to know more, uh, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy um, has a lot and much more in depth um, than anything I will ever go into. And that includes anything you want to know about uh, philosophy. What would you always like to know about philosophy? Um, I don't think they would have anything about puppies in particular. Oh, pleasure. Uh, handles the pleasure of prancing puppies and suckling babies without seeming to ascribe. So, compatibilism. Uh, so, it, yeah, no, I, I don't. Moral vegetarianism. Okay, is, that might get us closer. Uh, moral vegetarianism depends if humans eat, uh, eat meat to provide it, we raise animals. At what point are we going to be eating puppies? Well, puppies are delicious. Well, that's in that's in the references. So, uh, but there we go. Uh, if you want the moral background for moral vegetarianism? They have it. Um, they have. If you just want to see the overall views, um, they, it is a fantastic resource. Um, if you were just interested in philosophy. They have all sorts of uh, uh, cool little areas that you can get completely lost in. And it's really well referenced and backed up. Um, you'll get a good understanding of philosophy. And uh, now I just want to talk about the assignments a little bit. Because uh, your answers here matter in a way that I don't, I didn't think I could make clear. But first the handout, that is the handout, right? Um, I have given you not just the moral theories of utilitarianism, but I've included cultural relativism and divine command. So although I said those aren't ethical theories we're going to use, you may recognize them in others. So although, Relativism is not ethics. You may read one of those cases and you say, I think this is cultural relativism where we are accepting that it's wrong, but only wrong for us and not for them. Or it's wrong for them and not for us. And so if you recognize that and they give examples of each one, you can ascribe that to the ethical, even though it's not ethics, theory of what's going on to the example. Oh, it's on the Google Classroom. It's one of the links. So this is to help you, and if you didn't see it, as you're reading through the examples, you can refer to this. We've done utilitarianism. A divine command um, is not an ethical system we'll use, but you may recognize it in others. They're using a religious um, ethics. Um, they do make the, um, the handout makes the difference between Kantian and uh, um, non-Kantian deontology. We're not going to make a distinguish. If you think it's either one of those, um, you know, they're raising it to the principles as they did in that little film, um, or the one that we've discussed in class in which is about autonomy and respect for persons. Both of those are the same for your purposes. Um, and then talk about virtue ethics, and then we give a little summary page of all the different types. So that is available to you if you can see it. And then in the um, identifying ethical theories. So what I want to say for these is that more than one right answer is possible. Two people can give me the same answer, and they one can be right and one can be wrong. And two people can give me two completely different answers, and they can both be right. And the reason for that is sometimes the examples are ambiguous, and your reasons will determine whether or not your answer is right. So 
if you give me an answer that I think this is utilitarianism for this and this reason, then your reason should include consequences. If you say, I think this should be about deontology, then your reasons should talk about rights and duties. If it's virtue ethics, then you should talk about the virtues that are being displayed in the example. Now, some examples only have one right answer. I wrote them, so they are very clear. With giant neon flashy lights saying it's this ethical theory. And I'm hoping you picked up on that. And so there are answers that are more correct than others. But even in those cases, I have had the occasional answer where people have put down like the one that's wrong and the answers are like, that's not great. So, so, but sometimes they get a brilliant explanation of why it secretly is this other one, and I'm just forced to accept it. The power of your arguments uh, um, uh, persuaded me. So your reasons matter more than which theory you pick. Now, a lot of times, the story will really heavily point towards a particular ethical theory. It's not a trick. It's not the one, you don't avoid the one that's obvious. That's the one I'm expecting you to pick because there are examples in there that should really show that. And if you pick something else, you do need to justify why it's that one instead of the other one. Um, so, for example, the first one, Emu, the old grandmother of the Shushan tribe, could no longer chew buffalo hides to make them supple enough for making items of clothing. When winter came and food supplies were not sufficient for all, it was decided by the tribe that Emu would be left alone on a nearby hill to die, as had been done in the past. What ethical theory is this? Yeah. 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 And when I have that problem, I just say it's color of a robe. And you just sort of fade off to the end, and then people just assume that you know what It works every time. That would work. That's not the one I was thinking of. But with the right explanation, you could definitely do that one. Um, anybody have another one? Yes? You tell Jainism. Um, the greatest good for the greatest number. So with... Uh, um, Utilitarianism, you're going to be talking about consequences, great is good for the greatest number. With cultural relativism, uh, you're going to be talking about what's good uh, for a particular, uh, you're going to be looking at uh, cultural relativism says what's good for us doesn't necessarily mean it's good for others. The difficulty with that one and this one is that you've only got one group of people, so you're going to have to like draw that out. I have seen a cultural relativism written for this one, though, that was successful, but I think that's a harder one to do. Yeah. You could, absolutely, yes. If you think it really fits two of them, um, then you can. Sometimes uh, the examples are so obvious, and you bring another one up, I'm like, you, it, it kind of implies you don't know what it is if you bring that up and it has no relevance. But then again, it can depend on your reasons. So I, I, I have learned not to be absolutist about it um, because students are cleverer than I am. Using this handout, not this handout, this handout. Let's see. Let's get out a dilemma. And we should figure out some things. Chris Rogers Allard has several friends, including Ron, Paul Privet, and Ashley, Matt Ellis. Ron has recently met and started dating a wonderful person named Alex. They are convinced this will be a long-term relationship, and they are making plans to attend university together. Unbeknownst to Ron, Chris observed them at the sushi restaurant several days ago and realized Alex is the longtime partner of his other friend, Ashley. Chris is deciding whether to tell Ron that Alex is dating someone else. When he receives a call from Ashley, Ashley suspects their partner is cheating. Since Ashley and their partner share many friends and contacts with Chris, Ashley asks if Chris has heard anything about this. What should Chris do slash say and to who? So, let's see, we've got ten people. Um, let's go with I'll do attendance in a moment. Divide yourself into groups, no more than three, and they'll, except for we will have one group of four, I guess. 
because that's how Ken works. Um, and one group I'm going to point to be utilitarian, one group deontology, and one group virtue ethics. What? Yeah. Oh, so I can add in ethics of care. Appoint yourself into groups no more than three. That means there'll be one group of two, which is fine. Go to a board. Diagram this puzzle, because I find the relationships almost require a diagram to figure out what's going on, and then decide what is it that Chris should do. Three people per group, maximum. If you do not have three people in your group, find someone else until all the groups are stuck. And then I'll come over and tell you which one you're doing. Oh, can you can you not submit it online? Oh, and it's pretty. It's okay. It's all good. Even the paper is supposed to be pink. I can't color print. I like that that's included. Pretty is subjective. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Uh, first of all, diagram what what who's who's with who? Come on, you can erase what's on the board. Use a blue thing to erase, and, and, a, and a, so you can if you need to. And then diagram who's with whom and what's going on. Okay, who's the group with two? Is this the group with two here? So you get you get your pick then. So you get the most the smallest you want. Utilitarianism, deontology, virtue ethics, or ethics. This group? Okay. Um, let's go with utilitarian. Okay. Yeah, that's not utilitarian. So, Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Show the group the virtues that you picked, kindness, compassion, and honesty. Yeah, does that make sense? So your um, explanation derives from those values. You were a utilitarian? Okay. Virtue one, way of life, then Well, interesting. So, so Chris knows this is all going to explode eventually. The longer it takes before it does, the more good there is. Yeah. Huh. I'm, I'm both disturbed and impressed. Yeah. 
Theodology. Um, he tells Ashley that like oh, what's all happening because he's doing good. Like he doesn't want to lie and do the policy. He wants to do good. But then he's also doing justice and fairness because he's being fair and like that makes sense. The yeah. decision the way he should. And then he doesn't care about the outcome because he's intelligent. And that's a key part of he doesn't know what he wants. Yeah, it's principle, so we can blow up. Ethics of care. We have two very, very frosty sides. They're not now. frosty. This is an argument. We can't yeah. be on the okay. 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 Present, present both of them. Let's see what Okay, okay, good. I think Christian can tell either of them. Because in this situation, he's, he's trying to preserve their feelings and, their, and the friendships and the emotions that they have about this. And he's not going to tell either of them. So they're talking to him for at least a little bit longer until eventually they figure it out. And he's like, they just met. Why are they planning on going to the group together? So we get this is a toxic relationship. It's going to blow up in their faces either way, whether he tells them or he doesn't tell them. So to preserve yes. his relationship or hers, because we haven't, we haven't said which gender any of these people are, um, not going to say anything to anyone. To preserve the relationship. So you are basically <laughs> in the relationship. And the other version was? Okay, well, I think it's like health workers' jobs to like let them suffering as much as they can. Sure. And by allowing that lie to grow and for both people on both sides of Alex to get stronger feelings for whatever they identify as. And then for one of them to potentially end up at university with Alex, only to find out that Alex has been playing both of them well, with his okay. friends yeah, for the past year, that would be devastating. So much more devastating than having your friend who didn't lie to you come up and be forthright and say, hey, this person, Alex, is playing both of you guys. We need to talk about this. So you're, you're looking at their relationship and then about and 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 as ethics of care, caring about them, not wanting to get it to get further developed along the way. Yes. Okay. Also makes sense. You don't have to disagree. Though both of the, this exercise is to make sure that you know what virtues are, so you're making your decisions based on virtue, uh, that you know what the ethics of care is based on relationships, that you know the ontology is based on principles, the utilitarianism is about the character of the other So you can come up I'm not marking you whether or not you're right. But whether or not your reasons match your system. As we get used to the system. So both of those are fair and correct. You are both right. <laughs> it is high rated in class. It is high rated in class. Because the guy said to remind you is a yes. Okay, so that means it's um, 11 06. You have until 11 10. Let's take a four minute break, and then I'm going to give you another dilemma. And this will give me a few minutes. Well, we actually kind of were, I would normally say, if we've been sitting, taking notes, we've got to block it around. Whatever, take out your phone, walk around the classroom, go to the bathroom. But I'll enter in the... What I, what I really love about your argument is that is the argument that always comes up every time that kind of problem comes up. There are people who are like, let them solve it themselves because all you do is ruin your own relationships jumping in. And other people are like, no, you have to do something. There's whole soap operas made about this. They just met. <laughs> they just met. <laughs> Right off the bat. Right off the bat. Easy. <laughs> okay. I'm going to move. Well, it, you used to have to know this for court because, uh, no, but if someone was cheating, you'd bring evidence because you weren't granted a divorce unless there was a reason. So before the existence of what they now call no-fault divorce, you just get a divorce because you want to, 
it, it was it was a legally binding ceremony in which you had to stay attached to the other person unless there was a good reason in the eyes of the law. So if you couldn't, if you didn't have, if you didn't have, so to get a divorce, you wanted to divorce someone, you had to get evidence of the cheating. That doesn't happen nowadays. Most countries have no fault divorces, and the, and the court doesn't care. It doesn't actually matter to the court. But there are still a couple of places I think where where it comes up a little bit. Okay, we first one. Ruby is about a angel arises here. Sloan is gone and that's him. Tiga sick. Yeah. Yeah. There was eleven people from Ruby House. We had to bring meals back to you last night. That's how many people were sick and couldn't come. That's amazing. It's totally fine. Totally fine. It's okay. A boy this morning literally threw up all over his room, um, and it had to be walked by two people to the health center. Yeah. Upstairs. Kiki was very ill this morning. Yeah. He, well, for some, I've noticed this bug will hit everybody a little bit different. Some people get fevers. Some people get cough and cold. Some people get rapid onset nausea. And that cannot be so good. Oh, are you going to the grade eight musical? I just got an email from How many of you have been in grade eight here? <laughs> go, go one. Go to the musical. Number one, they're grade eight. They're adorable. I'm working. You're working. Two, when you go, cheer. Like, like almost over the top. Not to make fun of them, but like when they do something, like go over that. Everybody that watches them is literally bored and doesn't care. And they're just doing this for the first time. So when an audience cheers and they get really excited, like obnoxiously so, you would not believe how excited they get. Like people actually like us. It's so cute. Oh. Um, our um, Jacob, I suggest that everybody goes on Friday. Um, oh, today, yeah, it's on today. I, I, I suggest, and our old head prefect in his grade 11 year, Jacob uh, Hart, he started that in grade 11. He brought a bunch of prudent boys on, on their on their Friday and, like, totally hyped them up and just cheered in that kind of thing. And every grade after, talk, we heard about from their parents. We heard from them in their classes. Like, they were just like, they like us. We were actually good. It was so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot that happens in the next two years. Just wait till you're in grade 12. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm about to give you another dilemma. What? Who told you that? Who told you that? Oh, yeah, not not the grade eight program. You scared me for for a second, because that is literally how I found out we didn't have a. Um, uh, grade eight uh, borders. Ages ago, every house had grade eight borders. You had between four and six. Privet house had a dorm that was always the grade eight dorm. It had four beds in it, so it was a four-person dorm that was always the grade eight dorm. Yeah, it was a quad. 
It's where upstairs common room is now. About half of it was uh, was it, and then the other half is a regular dorm. Yeah, no, it was it was a really big room, but it, it fit four grade eights. Um, and then one year they decided not to have grade eights. I found out from a student in class. Oh yeah, they're canceling the grade eight program next year. We're not gonna have borders anymore. I was like, really? Because that student, their parent was on the board, so they just started feeding all the information in. Okay, I'm gonna give you a group in a second, but first I'm gonna show you. Let's do our next dilemma. Um, I'm not going to do this one because we've already kind of discussed that with the lifeboat, and it's a classic situation. I don't think we need to do that one again. Okay, you have one person that has to be removed or thrown off the lifeboat. We've kind of already discussed. This is similar because you're in a cave. One person gets stuck. You have to get out of the cave. How do you get out of the cave? <laughs> So that's, I think, a little depressing. Let's do one more Brentwood. <laughs> one of the most important characteristics of Brentwood is treating people equitably. This involves fairness and consistency, including regards to the rules applying to everyone equally. A few players on the first 15 got caught drinking over the weekend. Everybody here, does anybody here not know what the first 15 is? Okay, it is the uh, competitive rugby team. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah, no, no worries. I, there was a year when someone was like, what is that? Because you hit first 15, first 11, all that. The competitive soccer team. And field hockey, yeah. yeah. I don't think they refer it by first. Is it the first five? The first five. But yeah, it feels wrong. Anyway, this should lead to their suspension from the team immediately before the provincial championship game. They're going to the, the championship. This results in the entire team losing. The Brentwood's rugby program would also look bad, resulting in a few star students considering coming to Brentwood deciding to go to Sean again instead. <laughs> now remember, this is going to hurt the whole team, not just these few members. So I will once again come around and apply a scenario to you here are your groups. Find those people. Uh, erase what's currently on the board in the area, and I will come and appoint your ethical system. <laughs> we are... Oh, there's a garbage can there. <laughs> uh, you can grab a blue one. Um, Uh, what's your, your idea for 
put on the board to the Utilitarianism, that would inform that side. But yes, you just uphold, uphold, uh, 
But a different consequence to retain all the other relationships. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, a key word when you give the explanation will be that you're talking about your relationship. Okay, last good. You were. All the numbers you get dripped in the yeah. Okay. So you're explaining them. Uh, which of the now which of the virtues inform which action? So you can erase that one for the other brotherhood because you're keeping the rest of the team together. It's true. Um, oh, no. Now, to go back to this, you can see how, especially, this is called act utilitarianism, where you do what is good in that moment. You don't consider long term rules or anything, just in that moment, that would be the best thing to do. Uh, for long term, what would happen to the school if we routinely didn't suspend students if they were considered important? Yes, please. Everyone tries to do something important to do, like take on sports or other Oh, I'm not sure. Sure. And and just a baby. And then they just get like the alcohol or like every other person <laughs> is broken. <laughs> and then they like some if it was me. And yeah. it's just like we're bored. So, so, you know, so we have to go sports. We have to go sports. <laughs> yeah. I would be fun. I had heard rumors of Shelligan, but also I'm sure that there's some of that. So you're aware. I get this question a lot, especially at the end of the year when the grade twelves are like, I'm going to university again next year. Like it would really expect us to do that. In fact, if we all do suit do something. They couldn't expel all, they would have all the grade 12s, went on the field, and just drank in front of everybody. And and when they ask me, I'm going like, well, wouldn't they get charged for like, I mean, <laughs> practically speaking, the food would be expelled. Uh, would the school suspend every grade 12 that the school suspended? Yeah. They probably would for the long term consequences, because what would happen if we didn't? Yeah. And every grade 12 year, that would become a tradition. So you'll, you'll bite the bullet and take the hit that one year because you know the long-term consequences are so much worse. And it's all, of course, never all the grade 12. Um, the classic one is when the grade nines uh, who revolted against playing rugby. It was a terrible day. It was pouring rain, and they had to go outside for a practice. And they all collectively decided, like they messaged each other, we're just not going to go. So they're in their rooms, dressed, but hiding, looking out to see if anybody does go. And then uh, a boy from Privet House, who uh, eventually became the head of the Jim went and found a way to like, what are you doing? And they're like, we're not going to go. And so I said, you're going to be in so much trouble. Here's what's going to happen to you. And he marched the Privet rugby players up onto the field. So they're standing there in the pouring rain. And then you can see the Rogers boys poking their heads up. <laughs> and then they come out because now they're scared because other people, then slowly they made their way. <laughs> Yes. Do they, with the first two teams, aren't they just placing them like now that the best team? Maybe they can do play the game and then they go over the next one. <laughs> 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 that's the best team of the game. You're going to be really nice because you won the game with a big spike. And the number of other numbers are there. Now, <laughs> what ethical system did you would you justify that with? Uh, <laughs> Maybe utilitarianism, because you could say, well, that was the best cut outcome for everyone. They still got to play the game. You know? um, and then we expelled them. There is an element of fairness there, but only the deontologists would be really worried about that. 
Um, as long as we can show you the best consequences of being utilitarian, you'll be quite happy. <laughs> I hate this though. I can't do whatever. Just like drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep drinking. Just drinking. It's fine. Okay. Um, eleven twenty-eight. How many of you are done the last assignment? Oh, good. Mostly done. Yeah. So. After this exercise, does anybody need to go back and edit their responses? Why is what? Oh, it just automatically, if I give you a code, you can actually go and edit your monster and make it look whatever you want. Yeah, I, 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 it, it's picked somewhat randomly. When a new student is added, they're an egg and they hatch over a period of time. Yeah. Now, there are people who have reported that they remember things. Uh, yeah, according according to what we know about how memories are formed, you don't really form memories before you were two. Like, they just go away. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it it fades really fast. You're not. Yeah. And and the way your the way your brain physically makes long term memory doesn't work it, well. I wouldn't say properly because it's working as intended. It doesn't really kick in until two. You can form memories that are that are like loosely long term and that you'll remember over a period of days and you'll learn traits and habits. But like permanent memories of which you remember someone's, you know, things that happen apparently are very rare. They can occur, but not not easily. So are you even the same person you were? Or was that just a new person every day? Yeah, we did a whole personhood thing. Oh, right. Oh, I was supposed to do that while you were... Bad, bad. Um... I was going to do that while you were discussing, and then we just, well, it was too interesting to go around. Uh, what I'll try to do is after this class, email you with your mark. Yeah, during the next block. Um, and... So we are actually going to start a new unit on argument. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Arguments. We're going to do deductive and inductive reasoning. To introduce it, I have the argument clinic. However, I need to shut off the system. Uh, good morning. Hello. I'd like.
Signor Antonioni first makes use of colour to underline the basic... And now on BBC One, another six minutes of Monty Python's Flying Circus. I'd like to have an argument, please. Certainly, <laughs> Have you been here before? No, this is my first time. I see. Do you want to have uh, the full argument, or were you thinking of taking a course? Well, uh, what would be the cost? Well, yes, it's five. It's one pound for a five-minute argument, but only eight pounds for a course of ten. Hmm. Well, I think it's probably best if I start with the one and see how it goes from there, OK? Fine. I'll see who's free at the moment. Uh, Mr. Dubake is free, but he's a little bit conciliatory. Mm. Yes, sir. Try Mr. Barnard, room 12. Thank you. <clears throat> what do you want? <laughs> well, I was told outside. Don't give me that, you snotty face heap of parrot droppings! <laughs> what? Shut your festering gob, you tit! Your type makes me puke! You vacuous, toffee-nosed, malodorous pervert! What? I came in here for an argument! Oh! Oh, oh, I'm sorry, this is abuse. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see, well, that explains it. Yeah. Oh, no, you want 12A next door. I see. Yeah. Sorry. Not at all. No, that's all right. <laughs> Stupid git. <laughs> Come in. Is this the right one for an argument? I've told you once. <laughs> no, you haven't. Yes, I have. When? Just now. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Didn't. I did. <laughs> didn't. I'm telling you, I did. You did not. Oh, I'm sorry, is this a five-minute argument or the full half hour? <coughs> oh, oh, just the five-minute one. Fine. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, I did. You most certainly did not. Now, let's get one thing quite clear. <laughs> I most definitely told you. You did not. Yes, I did. You did not. Yes, I did. Didn't. Yes, I did. Didn't. Yes, I did. No, this isn't an argument. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It's just contradiction. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. It is not. It is. <laughs> you just contradicted me. No, I didn't. Oh, you did. No, 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 no. You did just no, then. No, no, nonsense. Oh, look, this is futile. No, it isn't. I came here for a good argument. No, you didn't. You came here for an argument. Well, an argument's not the same as contradiction. Can be. No, it can't. An argument's a connected series of statements to establish a definite proposition. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. It isn't just contradiction. Look, if I argue with you, I must take up a contrary position. But it isn't just saying, no, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> Arguments are an intellectual process. Contradiction is just the automatic game saying of anything the other person says. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Not at all. No, look. I... Thank you. <laughs> what? That's it. Good morning. But I was just getting interested. Sorry, the five minutes is up. <laughs> that was never five minutes just now. I'm afraid it was. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not allowed to argue anymore. What? If you want me to go on arguing, you'll have to pay for another five minutes. But that was never five minutes just now. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm very sorry, but I told you I'm not allowed to argue unless you pay. Oh, all right. There you are. Thank you. Well? Well, what? That was never five minutes just now. I told you I'm not allowed to argue it. I should pay. I just paid. No, you didn't. I did! <laughs> I did! I did! <laughs> but I don't want to argue about that. Well, I'm very sorry, but you didn't pay. Aha! Well, if I didn't pay, why are you arguing? Gotcha! No, you haven't. Is that? If you're arguing, I must have paid. Not necessarily. I could be arguing in my spare time. <laughs> I've had enough of this. No, you haven't. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I want to complain. You want to complain? Look at these shoes. I've only had them three weeks and they're all right through. No, I want to complain about the man. If you complain, nothing happens. You might just as well not bother and my back hurts. And whenever you have a fun day, look at the... I want to complain. Oh! Yes. <laughs> Hold your head like this and then go, wah! I've tried again. Oof. Whoa! Better, better, but wah, wah! Hold your hands here. No! No! Ah! No, that's it, that's it! Good! Stop hitting me! What? Stop hitting me! Stop hitting you? Yes. Well, uh, what did you come in here for? I came here to complain. Oh, I'm sorry. That's next door. It's being hit on the head lessons in here. <laughs> what a stupid concept. Right, hold it now. What? what? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Inspector Fox.